everyone, this is Andrew Embler, CTO of Concrete 5, and I'm going to show you how you can create your own grid framework for Concrete 5.7 and use it in your own theme. Uh, just a quick note, this requires Concrete 5 uh, version 5721 uh, and later due to some bug fixes in this actual system. So just, just fair warning, get the, the latest and greatest before you, before you try this. Um, a quick overview. Uh, in Concrete 5.7, uh, we've included grid frameworks um, for Bootstrap 2, uh, the 960 grid system, and Bootstrap 3. These are used to add grid support to layouts that you include in your areas, in your themes. Um, so if your theme is built off Bootstrap 3, you can add one line of code to a file that basically documents this, and then you'll be able to add um, then any layouts that you add into your themes will automatically, if you want, have the bootstrap classes applied to those divs. The, uh, the breakpoints will, will match the grids and they will be responsive and everyone will be in. Um, so we, yeah, we've got these three grid systems built in to 5.7, um, but there are obviously many more than that. And uh, they aren't even the only mo uh, Bootstrap 3 isn't even the only mobile first grid framework out there. Uh, another very popular grid framework out there is the Zurb Foundation uh, Foundation Toolkit for um, it's a popular front end framework and it has a grid as one of its components. And so anyone who wants to build a theme in Concrete 5. Uh, that uses the Zurb Foundation as a starting point might want to make use of that grid as a grid framework. And if they follow this tutorial, they'll be able to do so. So as you can see, I've got a foundation package that I've already made awaiting installation. If you haven't watched the how to package a theme tutorial screencast, uh, it'd probably be smart to do that now. Um, it's not, it won't take you more than 10 minutes. Um, this is the packages directory in my site. I've made this package, it's called Zurb Foundation. It's a pretty, uh, pretty standard packaged theme. And uh, only, one, uh, only one page template, very basic, um, no frills, doesn't really implement much except as a good starting point for using the Zurb Foundation. Um, it's basically unmodified, copied it in there, converted to Concrete 5 theme. So let's install that. And then we will activate this theme on our site. We go back to the home page. And if we put the page in edit mode, you can see we've got two areas here, the sidebar area and the main area. Not a whole lot going on, but it's a perfect, uh, perfect learning opportunity. So let's open up the default page template here. Um, you see I've included the header and the footer in this page. Um, just so that it makes total sense what we're looking at. And you'll see here we've got our sidebar and main areas, and they are wrapped in Serb Foundation classes. Uh, so in the, in the Foundation uh, framework, you basically just use row and columns as your class. There's no containers or anything like that to use the grid. And we've got a sidebar area and a main area, and they work, uh, they display on large, large displays, and that's what we that's what we're working at here. So let's say I wanted to add grid support to my main area since it is a large area. I'm going to keep this one small, but I'm going to make this area able to support um, sub areas. Or I'm going to make this uh, area able to support uh, columns. So the first thing I'm going to do is set area grid maximum columns equals to 12. That's because, why did I choose 12? Uh, 12 is because that's what the Zurb Foundation uh, framework works off of. And they're all sort of relative to the container element. So one thing that's interesting is you'll notice this is coming inside of the nine columns and I've got 12. That's because this is sort of a relative, um, a relative uh, proportional grid that will automatically adapt to the container element. So you're gonna get 12 columns in here, but they're gonna be smaller than if you included this inside of a larger area. So we start with this. And if we put our page in edit mode again, and we try and add a layout, you'll see we don't have any sort of, we don't have special 
grids yet. We still only have freeform layout, even though we added that in code. Uh, that's because we haven't specified what kind of grid framework we're going to use. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the page theme class, and this should be familiar to anyone who has watched a previous tutorial on how to specify using one of the built-in frameworks. I'm going to add a protected variable. Eat the grid framework handle equals foundation. And I'll refresh this page, and I'll get an error. Driver foundation not supported. Uh, that's totally expected. Uh, we told the we told the theme to use the foundation grid, but since it doesn't ship in the core, Concrete 5 has absolutely no idea what we're talking about. It doesn't know what that is. It doesn't know where to find its class. It doesn't know how that grid works. It doesn't know anything. So we're going to tell it what it needs to know. First, in our package directory, we are going to create a PHP class that represents the grid framework for foundation. So let's add a new folder called src. Um, if you look in the core, the src folder holds most of the uh, most of the gen the general PHP classes in Concrete 5 these days. Very different than 5.6 and earlier. Um, blocks and things like that are still contained in their own directories, but beyond that, src is where it's at. And so we're going to follow that in our package as well. And in here, we are going to create a new file called uh, what do we, call it? we are going to create a new file called foundation grid framework.php. And let's, since I don't actually have a file handy, let's just start with this one. We'll rename it framework.php. We'll open it, delete all that junk that we put in there. So now we have a file in here called foundation grid framework.php. And Let's create the class that goes here first. And I actually have this class handy already, so we don't have to. You don't have to watch me type for hours. Paste that in there. And now we're going to go through what every piece of this means. Top. We have a namespace. By now, this is probably looking pretty familiar. Uh, the namespace of any package begins with concrete package and then the camel cased version of that package. So since our package's handle is zerb underscore foundation, we start with concrete package zerb foundation. Uh, since this appears in the SRC directory, we also include slash SRC at the top. This is not the way the core works, but this is the way packages work. Next, we include the core grid framework class that any grid framework that we create must extend. That's right here, concrete core page theme grid framework grid framework. Um, that's just an abstract class that uh, tells us the types of methods that we are going to need to implement in order to make a working grid framework. And then we make sure to name it the same as our file, same case, same everything. So foundation grid framework, is the name of the class. It's also the name of the file. It extends the core grid frame. Next, we have a whole bunch of methods that are abstract in our grid framework class. If I jump in there, you can see what that looks like. We've got to define the name of the framework. We have to define the row start, row end HTML, container start HTML, container end HTML. If you're looking at the uh, documentation on concrete5.org, We've got a full list of the methods. You can also peruse the API documentation to show what classes you need to include. And then let's walk through our implementation of this. Um, once you can get past the sort of long method names, it's probably going to be pretty easy to understand. This first method determines the name of our grid framework. It's pretty obvious. Um, the next two deal with the start and end HTML for the framework rows. So anytime this framework creates a row, what HTML do they use? And the Zerg Foundation uses div with class of row. So we've got that right there. Next, we have two methods that deal with the start and end of the container HTML. Well, the, the Zerg Foundation doesn't use a container, so we leave those blank. 
Next, we have an array of the grid framework column classes. Um, we're using small dash one through small dash 12. Uh, responsive grid frameworks have a little more flexibility here uh, with uh, small, medium, large. Uh, Bootstrap uses call dash SM dash one or call uh, dash uh, MD dash one. Uh, right now, Concrete 5 doesn't support that. There's only one set of column classes. We are looking at a smart way of doing that in the future without making it impossible to understand what you're doing. So right now, you have to choose one class that you want to use when you're doing this. Next, we have uh, Theme Grid Offset classes, and these are just the classes that the Foundation uses for offsets. Um, you don't, you, if you return a blank or, or if you return uh, an empty array, um, offsetting will just be done with the classes that are done here with empty columns. And finally, uh, get page theme grid framework column additional classes and additional offset classes. Um, many grid frameworks, this will be blank, bootstrap it's blank, but the uh, Zurb Foundation needs both a class here small dash four, small dash one, as well as a class named columns. And you can see that if we look at the implementation of the grid in the template. It's large dash three, but it also needs columns. So anytime there is one of those sort of additional classes that needs to be added onto the end of each div, we display, we uh, specify that here. So we've got our grid framework class defined in uh, in the right spot and once we do that we could reload the page and we're still gonna get the error why is that well it's probably pretty obvious even though we have you know specified this grid framework file here in our source uh, directory we haven't told concrete 5 that it exists or that it is the place to grab that data. Um, it lives in a package, Concrete 5 doesn't know. Concrete 5 doesn't know that this thing can satisfy the requirements of the foundation grid. So what we're gonna need to do finally is to register the grid framework in the package. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some classes to the top of our package controller. Actually, that's the wrong one. And the Vertex Core. So this first one, we are getting ready to use the Foundation Grid Framework class that we just created. And then the second one, we're going to use the Global Core class. And the Core class is used to um, instantiate objects in Concrete 5.7 kind of similar to how loader was used in the past if you've ever used that um, a lot a lot different under the hood but uh, sort of the same kind of general idea next we need to create we need to actually do the registration and to do that we are going to implement an on start method uh, every package can do this um, on underscore start that's the name of the method if a package includes this method and is installed it, this will be run very early in the Concrete 5 bootstrapping uh, process for every package that is installed. So this is a perfect place for us to register this, um, for us to register this grid framework. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to make an instance of the manager, oh, that's wrong, the manager grid framework class. Um, this actually corresponds to a class in the core called a grid framework manager in the page theme grid framework namespace. Um, we will make uh, a full list of all these sort of uh, pointers to these managers and uh, sort of classes that you can access this way. Um, we'll make a, a full list of those available in a developer's appendix. Um, but basically what we're doing is we're getting an instance of this grid framework manager, which we which is shared throughout the entire Concrete 5 code base. And then we are going to register an extension in it. So 
Um, this is just a closure that is going to be returned anytime someone asks for the foundation grid. Um, this is an instance of the uh, core application um, object. Probably don't care about that at the moment. We don't need to worry about it. So you'll see what we're doing is we're just returning an instance of the class that we have already namespaced. And the manager class takes care of only binding this when it's requested and not binding it multiple times, not instantiating it multiple times. It's a really very elegant way of handling it. So I'm going to refresh the page, and now my site loads. And you'll see that by default, foundation is selected. And if I if I uh, add classes, or if I add columns, you'll see that everything is working. We are using the actual, um, we are using the actual framework behind the scenes. And if I collapse down, um, you know, everything is still, um, everything is still fluid and still uses those classes. And that's all I need to do. So. Uh, you can see that it's pretty easy to add your own grid frameworks. Um, again, this does require 5.7.2.1 um, and later, but hopefully that shouldn't be an issue. And one last little note uh, that might be of interest. Uh, so I used the foundation grid framework for this tutorial because I thought people would find it useful and it actually helped iron out some of the kinks in the system. Um, but in 5.7.2.1, we will be including this grid framework in the core. So you don't have to ship this yourself. Um, we recognize it is a very popular, uh, it's a very popular uh, front end toolkit. So we're going to provide support for it for yourself. Uh, but again, this is not really about that as much as it is about adding the support for any grid framework that we may or may not ship it. So hope this helps and I will catch you guys later.